All right, everybody, welcome back. Another edition live at Drew's house. Hope everybody is doing okay. Uh, enjoying a little bit of that warmer weather uh, and all that good stuff. Um, speaking of that, with warmer weather, one of my favorite things to do uh, this time of year is go out and see some live music. And some of that is actually happening in a end of, hopefully an end of pandemic world. Uh, let's get right to my guests because they're here and ready to go. Uh, Lynn Taylor, who's been on the show before uh, with many other musical artists. This is good. We get to spend some quality time today. And Charlie Rockwood joins us. Hello, Charlie. And Hello. they make up Rockwood and Taylor. So there we go. I have that correct, I do, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very good. How are you, you two? We're good. We're uh, hanging out here in Ohio. We have, uh, you know, speaking of live music coming back, um, um, Ohio is my home state and so a lot of times in April I like to come back visit family and uh, throw a few gigs in there as well so we're on a little mini tour we've got a couple breweries we're playing and um, it's really fun to be out and playing again live for people and we had hoped to escape some of the New England snow but we woke up this morning we're in Cincinnati and there's snow oh man no. Nope. Nope. Uh, today it's actually beautiful here back home. So, uh, where, where do you two both uh, live? There, there's, wow, loud dog. Stop that. <laughs> um, where do you two both live? I know you're both Merrimack Valley area, but where is it specifically for people who are bumping into you around town? Newburyport, right downtown. So, oh, we yeah. bump into people quite frequently, actually. Very yeah. good. I think that was the first time I saw you. I think Lynn was at the, um, I think at the Newburyport uh, brewery there. Uh, back in the day and I said oh well she is just fantastic yeah that's awesome yeah and we're actually that is our first local show um, in the new report area is going to be at the new report brewing company so we're really excited about that I know last time we talked you were on a, here with a bigger group of musicians and we were talking about kind of that struggle to get back um, Mm. So finally, people are starting to seem seemingly put schedules together to play a little bit how refreshing is that for you it's awesome it, oh yeah it's been a it's been a long year <laughs> it's been a long day yeah it's kind of like groundhog day it really is. <laughs> 2020 the longest day ever <laughs> I, I mean you two are you're always playing i mean i see just the you know, i look at your schedule almost every time it comes around or pops up on facebook or whatever and it's like that is that is what you do. You love to play. You're musicians who love to get out there and play in front of audiences. You know, yep. there's, some artists are more like that than others. They really love the live feedback. And um, I mean, it's just it must have been just such a void. It's been a void for me watching shows. Never mind for artists who can't play them. Yeah. Yeah. It it has. It, it was like a definite adjustment. And you know, some artists really um, were able to make the move to doing. Um, like online shows and we did a couple of those but it just I, I just didn't I wasn't feeling it feels weird <laughs> so. like like you said no audience feedback you, mm -hmm. it's hard to gauge you know and you're trying to be entertaining <laughs> it's like Jesus that go over well and yeah. who's watching you know sometimes you're playing and a lot of times you're looking at a phone you can't even see yeah. you know who the audience is or how many people are even on or you know if your jokes are funny or not <laughs> they're, they're not usually anyway but it's, we try we try well that's all you can ask for the um it's what every time somebody brings that up i always think one of the first musicians that we had on from the the at home variety of the show welcome to my kitchen by the way um mm -hmm. but the but the uh one of the first musicians we had on was a guy by the name of uh, ryan Montplu who had just really started jumping into the streaming and uh he, oh. he's great he's became one of my favorites but he said he actually had to tell his girlfriend and uh her daughter you know what stop with the clapping because it sounds like a really lonely bar after yeah. I play a song when you clap in the house, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, better better to have none than just like two. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's very funny. So but I actually watched a couple of your streams though. They were especially around, like Christmas time, you definitely did one. And yeah. you had a nice little setup with the Christmas tree and everything. I thought it was very nice. Oh, oh thank good. you. Yeah, uh, so. I don't, Somebody I don't... was watching. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was it? I mean, it was. I think it was Christmas time. I remember like Christmas lights. You were very decorated. I thought it was good. Oh, cool. 
Yeah, yeah. we out. actually leave those Christmas lights up year round. They're they're oh. like our stage lights. So it may have been Christmas time, and it may not have been. Yeah. So that yes, yeah. it could have been any time. It was yes. very. It's all a blur. One long day. Um, mm -hmm. What's it been like? Has it been like? I know for me, I will never take certain things for granted after this. Um, maybe you didn't anyway, and good for you. But is there a level of that, like just so thankful to be back on stage, and will never complain about having to do this, 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 or this? <laughs> yeah. Basically. For sure. Yeah, like the first time getting back. Um, was uh just hearing the audience like it was just like wow like how much it was missed and yeah like it's yeah the audience is really how do you appreciative describe it? Yeah. yeah the audience is also really appreciative too which is really nice like we just did a show in um kent ohio um mm -hmm. on sunday and most of the people there were so excited because it had been it was the first live show that they had seen of 2021 you know yeah and we're, we are still doing um outdoor shows as much as possible even though i'm double vaxxed now Woo, he's <laughs> he's working on his he'll be getting his second one soon yeah but um yeah like i just i didn't feel good um Encouraging. I even, you know, as New Hampshire opened up, we talked a little bit about that last time we were talking. And I may have been one of the few lone voices that was just like, you know, I don't feel comfortable encouraging people to gather in indoor spaces before they're vaccinated. I just, I just didn't feel comfortable. So we just made the decision: mm, we're not going to play all winter. We're just not going to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I actually I had a lot of respect for you for doing that because that was actually not the crowd that was taking that stance. The majority, most of the. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now I did hear that one of those people did end up getting sick too. Yeah. Oh, right, really? after, right <laughs> after that conversation, probably like what, maybe a week later. Uh, yep. Ended up I think you may have to tell me. I don't know who it is. You'll have to tell me that after the show, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that I, I did not realize that. Well, we hope that person is better. They're fine. Yeah. And, you know, and thankfully, you know, I feel, I, I mean, getting back to you know that conversation i feel like massachusetts did a, has done a, a decent job you know and i'm very happy that the va vaccines have been rolling out and um you know it was a little frustrating at first people trying to get vaccines and i guess i'm hearing now new hampshire has uh excess of vaccines or something like that we can go there apparently <laughs> they uh, are letting people go yeah, there letting people mm -hmm. go there yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. What um it, it is interesting the industry for me uh, and again we're joined by Lynn Taylor and Charlie Rockwood um I I do see it being a little bit of time until these big shows like the you know mm. the Mansfields and the stadium shows and the Boston Gardens um, are able to come back I wonder is that, like for me I love the I love going to the breweries and going to smaller arenas and smaller theaters anyway um, smaller theaters aren't going to be back to uh, probably the last ones too but. Um, I wonder if you see it as maybe an opportunity, like maybe there'll be more people eager to come out and see, you know, an act they've never seen before and, you know, that sort of thing and learn about a new artist just because they want to get out and see music. Yeah, I think so. I think so. You know, like, yeah. like we were saying that the shows that we, you know, the show we just did um, here in Ohio, people were just so grateful just to come out and uh, see live music and, um, yeah, like the outdoor shows where people can, you know, feel pretty safe. I think uh, it's good. It's good to be able to uh, do this again. And um, just connect to people, you know, on a, where you can see them in person. You know, we ended up having, you know, conversations with people afterwards just about music. And, and that's always one of the great things about playing live too is the people that you get to meet mm -hmm. and the conversations that you get to have the connections that you get to make you yeah. know we go out we try to you know we try to go out uh, a few times a year and do these little mini tours and um you know most a lot of times we we play a lot of breweries and uh you know coffee shop type venues and we just uh it's so awesome to meet people and have the conversations and um, you know, we, we just love traveling and being on the road. 
That's great. It is true. That is one thing that keeps coming back. Every musician I talk to, it's like, you know, because you do end up in this world of musicians and whether it be, you know, people that, I don't know, whether it be roadies or bartenders or whatever, you see a lot of these same people that actually do become part of your lives and you don't really realize it. And then in a pandemic, you're just suddenly not seeing those people. And I guess it's, you know, everybody's dealing with that at some point in right now, but, um, or has been over the last year, but uh, yeah. for the musicians, I think musicians are really saying like, I really miss all those other artists that I get to bounce ideas off of and you know, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and on a computer, it's just not the same. It's um, as everybody knows, I mean, it's yeah. it, that we're all kind of going stir crazy with, trying to do stuff i mean i know a lot of musicians have made the shift of like all right well especially people who make their living uh, solely from music mm. they, they're kind of like all right i gotta make the shift from being on stage and you know in a recording studio with all the musicians how do i make that shift and i'm sure it's been really difficult to go okay this is all new and different now and and how are we going to make that work and it, you know, scary and a little uncomfortable and, you know, all right, let's put out a live show. It is anybody listening, you know? Oh, okay. And they start, it's, it's amazing that they've made it work I, to me. Cause I, we just, we were just like, I just didn't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> it's, it was, it was just too difficult. It was like too difficult emotionally, not, 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 not just to do, but it just didn't, it's not as satisfying no. to, just try to do these recorded quote unquote concerts in our living room. It just like, yeah. well, this is where we write and make mistakes and, you know, practice yeah. and, and. Which it did give us on the flip side. A lot of there's time a to silver, do that. there's a silver lining. You know, we have lots of time to practice and try new things. And um, I mean, you were doing a ton of, uh, YouTube yeah. lessons I'm and get you get better, some recording you know? in the attic and uh, so yeah we got a new single coming out soon that came from basically the pandemic mm-hmm. uh, we weren't very pro- prolific in writing uh, but definitely a lot a of practicing mm-hmm. you know, we had a couple songs but yeah we're gonna have a new single coming out which we're, we're very proud of excited about that touring behind that now yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. What's the, uh, does it have a pandemic? Uh, I know a lot of artists are just naturally writing about the pandemic. Does it have that sort of vibe to it? it yep. It does. <laughs> it's called, it's called a uh, basket in hand. And it's kind of like when you're feeling like the whole world is going to hell. Yeah, I'll in a hand basket. basket. I got my basket in my hand. <laughs> so you'll hear, you'll hear it when it's done. But yeah, we're really proud of it. We like it. Of course, you always like your newest songs the best. Mm-hmm. Is that yeah. true? You always like the newest ones? Mm, I think so. Yeah, I mean, sometimes the old, like, there's, like, one or two older songs that you're like, you know, I really do still like playing that song. It doesn't mean the newest song is the best song, but we're, we're just, it's so fresh for for you as an artist that you're like, oh, and you just wrote it, and you're like, you're like yeah, that song, that, that's the best song we ever wrote. It may not be, but... It's, you know, it, it puts a little juice on it anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, you're excited about it. You're ready to, like, you know, really work it and, and uh, you know, have it be the best that it can be. Okay. Rather, rather than, you know, oh, I've been playing the song and it's like, but it could be your best song <laughs> that you wrote, you know, 10 years ago. You guys, oh. you guys are pros, pros. So you, you do know the ones that like your maybe your audience is expecting on a certain night. Do you kind of treat those like your first born sometimes? Like you know what, mm-hmm. I'm kind of sick of playing it, but I, I have to do it. It paid its you know respect and play this song tonight. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I, I mean, there, I, I feel like. Once I start playing the song, I don't know if this happens to you. Like sometimes I'm looking at the set list and I'm like, yeah. oh, I don't know, I feel like playing this song. But then once I start playing it and I get the emotion of it comes back, because once you start playing it and singing it, you know, I get right into the emotion of whatever it was. And then it becomes fresh as ever. That's what I find 
nine times out of 10. And then, yeah, especially like live, like mm-hmm. in, Again, front, yeah. in front of people, mm-hmm. like it is, it does help you help bring back that sort of emotion. Um, as you start to play that an, an older song that, you know, in rehearsal, it's like, mm-hmm. Oh, it's a little, you know, God, we do this song and it's like, can we have something fresh and new, you know, to bring. And then you go and you play it live and you're like, Oh, that's why, that was a song a good that's why that was a good song to begin with and why it was in the set so and you know audience response definitely you know boosts that when you when you see people really paying attention and you know if you're lucky people are singing along and you're like oh okay you know Mm -hmm. and it just brings it all back and yeah you you get excited about it again you know yeah, yep. brings it all back. I understand that. Again, Lynn Taylor and Charlie Rockwood joining us uh, of Rockwood and Taylor. Um, you, you know, we talked a lot about the streaming. I know a lot of people end up going the streaming route. Really, I'm sure you've heard some stories from friends that because they really had to. They had to find a way to make money. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, I know some people, I, I, you know, some musicians were lucky enough to maybe do other things or whatever and don't have to do that. But, I mean, it has been devastating for a lot of these artists, just, you know, trying to trying to get by and music was what they do. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, maybe some of them could pull off the streaming. But like you said, it's a grind <laughs> and it's, it's setting up payment options for, you know, and I know a lot of people aren't even comfortable with that because it feels like you're begging sometimes people who right. are be begging and... Yeah. Um, have you heard some stories like that from people that have really been kind of struggling with it in, in your industry? Yeah, yeah a, a little bit. I think um, a lot more so in the beginning of getting started. There, like people like Charlie Caruso, who was trying to stay relevant, you know, in a lot of ways, and he started doing his online thing. And at first, he was like, "Oh, it's weird," and then he got into it, and now he does his thing every week, yeah. and. Like, and he was raising tons of money for charity. Raising tons of money. Um, I don't know if he, I think he's, I don't know if he's still doing it. Well, he's doing it with Dave. Yeah, he's, he stopped doing the, he, he's a friend of the show here, so we've had him on uh, several times. But yeah, uh, yeah. And... Sorry to interrupt, keep going. Oh, and that was, well, something else we started, re- we've been recording with him. Because um, he, you know, like, again, like some, one of the silver linings of the pandemic, um, you know, so he's had more time and he's, he's has a, solo project that he's been working on and we've been playing Charlie's a drummer and I'm a bass player as well with our thing I play piano and he plays guitar but we actually met as a bass player and drummer um with Liz Frame and the Kickers that's how Charlie and I met many years ago yep many years ago and that it must be fun to now you can kind of feel free to start collaborating a little bit more too, right? And do projects like that as you know, as you get vaccinated and as the world starts yeah. to open up a little bit, hopefully. Yep, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, we've been we've been having fun with that, and yeah. So Charlie's going to be having a, a new record coming out. I don't know, probably within the next. Who knows? Three yeah. months. Something like that. We're we're halfway we're we're halfway through. Do you feel like I do Newburyport and the surrounding? I mean, some communities are better than others, but I love the um, I love the more communities trying to encourage live music and uh, trying to get more. I always think it's kind of depressing when you walk into a place that would be perfect for just have somebody in there and just missed opp- missed opportunities kill me like that. I uh, do, do you feel like it's a good a good city for kind of pushing live music? I do. Mm. I don't know. I do. And I think, I mean, well, you, you can differ with me. I think it's... We may. We don't agree on everything. <laughs> I think it's I think it's good in the surrounding communities. I, you know, I think that they support live music fairly well. And I mean, what I really enjoy about New Report is the community of musicians, mm. which I think is awesome, especially for such a small town. There, I feel like there is a a wealth of talent in in a relatively small area and it's just awesome to have to be really friends with um, so many other talented musicians and be able to bounce ideas off and experiences and it's just that's what I love but what were you going to say about the oh I was going to say about venues about places to play it, like yeah Newburyport's a little it's a little light in that area uh, I mean you do have the Newburyport Brewing Company um and they there is the firehouse but the firehouse is a slightly larger venue for 
places and of course it's been closed down i don't even and think it's been open, closed yeah. down like places like that you know all the regular indoor menus but there's like there's that and there's the the grog, the grog. and that's kind of it there's for solo people who want to do who do like the bar gig kind of stuff there's you know a couple of bars that do have live music but it, it would be nice for you have a coffee like house. you said missed opp missed opportunities for oh that'd be a great place for live yeah. music and there's but like lynn said there is a lot of talented musicians and running spectrums of different genres of music as mm -hmm. well it's you know we don't really have like a necessarily a scene of a style of music just a lot of great musicians mm -hmm. from jazz to rock to you know folk yeah, yeah. i think even like mm -hmm. it, it, Here's a topic I bet you both will feel very strongly about. So what, I mean, sure you've had these fights along the, along the years as you've gone through your travels, but have you ever been, I think I know the answer to this, but have you ever been like turned away by a venue, a place, a bar owner, whatever, um, because you're gonna say, oh, I'm gonna come in and play a lot of originals as that happens? Yeah, well, more, more not turned away at the door, but more like hard to get in the door. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so trying to get booked. over time, We've, uh, uh, we've realized that, yeah, what kind of venue to even approach, you know? Um, and so, yeah, your typical r restaurant gig, which, you know, we, we, don't, we don't seek those gigs out, you know? So breweries actually, um, we have found kind of walk that line where they're, you know, sometimes not the people aren't there specifically to listen to music, but they tend the audience tends to appreciate music, and they tend to appreciate live music and um, original music. Um, so breweries don't tend to expect that you will do covers, which is nice. Craft beer and craft music. <laughs> there we go. So you know, yeah, it's funny. I like and and what's great is like there's all these small breweries all over the country. All over the country. So you can just kind of go from brewery to brewery. That's, when we go on our tours, that's a lot, you know, we, we book a lot of breweries. And there's usually a built-in audience because people love going to these breweries and, you know, and visiting them. So like to meet people and, you know, play music for people who may not even be necessarily from the area you're playing in, they just happen to be visiting and going, where's the nearest craft brewery I can go to? Yes. And you're there playing music and they're like, oh, they have live music here? This is great. Like, and, mm -hmm. and so you can meet people from other states and, you know, other towns that have, that have come in sort of just, they, they're there to get beer and they're like, wow, there's live music and this was good. And like, we enjoyed ourselves. Thank you so much. And it's been, it's been basically how we've, been able to do our tours mm -hmm. yeah. and yeah. have have good places to play mm -hmm. and fun places to play with cool people. Yeah. Do you guys play tonight in Ohio? We're our next one is going to be Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. We're playing at a brewery. What's the first? Uh, what's the date of the first local show back in the uh, the Merrimack Valley? May first. We're going to be playing at Newburyport Brewing Company. So that's and the first, okay. The eighth, we're gonna be May eighth. We'll be at Cider Hill for one of their like event festival things, and then the fifteenth, May fifteenth, we'll be at Bear Wolf Brewing. Excellent. And uh, then we're just gonna keep on going from there. Starting to fill up. Lovely thing. Uh, yes. Final yeah. thoughts. How it, give me that. I know we kind of covered it. We'll, we'll overlap a little bit. But final thoughts, just overall, you're sitting here getting ready to play live shows again. What's going through your veins here as you think about that? Oh, I, well, the first one, I was really, really nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and you know it's we knew been six months since we played in front of people and lynn's from ohio so she knew she was like Made a lot of people she had a lot of people coming and i'm like I'm, wow i'm like really nervous like <laughs> I, like i haven't played live in front of people in like six months eight months something like that which is like i've never done that in my entire life mm -hmm. of being of playing music since i was i don't know 21, 22 years old. So it's been a long time since I haven't been on stage that long. And 
yeah, I was really nervous. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like what's going through my mind at first. And now I'm like, when's the next one? <laughs> like, let's go, let's yeah. do this. And I just always feel so, um, just so grateful and blessed, you know, to be able to, um, you know, have, share, share our songs with people and have people appreciate them. And, you know, it sounds cliche, but, you know, even if one person, even if you connect and touch one person in the audience and one person in the audience comes up and says, you know, oh, that song, it really, you know, I really resonated with that song. And that's, for me, that's why I do it. You know, that's, it means so much. And so I'm just always grateful to be able to do it. Very well said. All right. Well, Lynn Taylor, Charlie Rockwood, look forward to seeing you back out on the, uh, on the road and the shows in Newburyport, wherever you be, uh, we'll find you here in the coming months. Um, rapid fire, quick one minute to end the show. Can you answer these quick questions? First thing that comes to mind, quick answers. Yeah, who, who's gonna sure. go for, are we going to go back and forth or how are who, we going to do it? Yeah, who wants to go first? Second person has the advantage. All right, I'll, uh, I'll go second. <laughs> okay. Um, All right, and you got the tough one. Favorite musical artists? Oh, God. Um, my, local people um, that we play with, you know, Charlie Caruso, Liz Rehm, uh, you know, Chuck Melton, Chuck Melton, uh, Justin Lang. Those, those, that's who I love to listen to. There you go. Charlie. Ah, uh, geez. I hate these questions. Um, I'm going to have to, yeah, I'm going to have to like sort of pass cause I don't have a favorite. You Art. know, I jump around so much that like I, I have a weird listening habit of listening to music. Take this one then. This is one you'll have to answer. Favorite concert all time. Favorite concert all time. Uh, Molly Crew and Rat back in 1984. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it was my first. So and it was it was very very exciting. So I'd have to say that's my favorite. Mm -hmm. Lynn. Uh, Chili Peppers at the channel when they were wearing just socks. Oh, yes. <laughs> I've seen pictures of that. Oh, yes. <laughs> you see her face when she said that? <laughs> <laughs> favorite, favorite venue to play? Hmm. Purple Fiddle in uh, West Virginia. Purple Fiddle. I'm going to have to agree with that one. Purple Fiddle. OK, that's interesting. And let's see, what's a good last one to do? You guys travel a lot, so what's your favorite city to play? Mm. Nashville. 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 Nashville? Yeah, I'd have to say Nashville. Although Asheville's pretty cool. And Asheville, too. Asheville, North Carolina. They're all kind of cool and different in their own way. But yeah, I think Nashville is probably hands down the favorite city to go to. Okay. I mean, it's Music City. How, how do you? Mm -hmm. Live you music know? everywhere. Not li yeah, live music everywhere. There's guitar shops that are amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, people love music. Mm -hmm. So like you, yeah, music city. Yeah. You can't beat it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that was good. You're off the, off the hook. You did well. Yeah. <laughs> um, we look forward to seeing you out there. Congrats on getting back and playing some live music and uh, doing what you love. Have fun. Thank All you right. so thanks. much thanks for, for having, having us. us. It's, we really, really, really appreciate it. Absolutely. Can't wait to see you live. Bye, guys. All right. Bye-bye.